I'm Jen. I'm Chris. We live here at the Sunshine Farm. Mwah. This is our story. Three years ago, we moved from a house in the city to a 12 and a half acre farm in upstate New York. After struggling with health issues for a couple of years, I felt like life was too short to wait for your dreams. And so at 22, we bought our horse farm without ever having grown up on a farm or ever spending any real time on one. December 16th, 2016. Our new home. I can't wait to see horses in the barn and out in the pastures someday soon. Our first addition to the farm, a flock of six chicks, only a day old, and a miniature horse all in the same week. April 18th, 2017. We're getting a miniature horse. April 27th, 2017. Our six little chicks arrived. At about three days old, they are all fluff and so cute. Their little chirping is both adorable and calming, and I'm excited to watch them grow. The real dream was to have a horse that I could ride and take care of and soon we found we found a horse. June 27, 2017. Officially the new owners of this cute guy. He will be arriving at the Sunshine Farm later this week. We had our hands full with a flock of chickens and one and a half horses working full-time jobs and maintaining the property. But there was a couple more animals that we ended up adding in that first season of life at the farm. We came across a story where 27 goats were rescued without any food or water. August 29th, 2017. We are adopting goats, two six-month-old twins, and a two-year-old doe. But it wasn't over yet. Turns out Willow was pregnant and she gave birth to a little baby goat in one of the coldest weeks ever on the farm. And her name was Noelle. Hi, Noelle. December 19th. 2017. Welcome to the world, little Noelle. This little one and her mother are doing well. The second summer of the farm, everything changed for me and for us. started my first garden, three raised beds and a 30 by 50 plot, and I fell in love. I fell in love with gardening and quickly desired to grow more of our own food. Known, 
July 27th, 2018. Today's harvest was the best yet. Tomatoes, early harvest potatoes, basil, serrano peppers, a cucumber, and of course some farm fresh eggs. I cooked up a dinner with only food from the farm and it was so good. I'm having so much fun with the garden. I'm completely hooked. Oh, I wanna see ya. We discovered just how delicious homegrown food was, how much more flavor it had, and we learned just how many things we could grow at home that we never found at the store. Our focus changed. It changed to growing food, and we learned about the homesteading movement. August 26, 2018. Hooray for a pumpkin harvest. It feels so good to finally be able to harvest these giant fruits, especially since some of the other plants didn't go so well. This year, I failed with cauliflower, broccoli, watermelon, soybeans, corn, eggplant, and green beans. I'm going to learn from the mistakes and appreciate all of the lessons learned. But if we stop running, that will be done. August 27th, 2019. Growing and harvesting beautiful food is not just about pretty pictures. It is so much bigger than that. It's about feeding our bodies real food that's full of nature's medicine. Fueling our bodies to get through the week and helping our immune systems fight off illness and disease. It's decreasing our grocery bills so we can be empowered to save more and learning to be creative in the kitchen with cooking and preserving food. I never expected gardening to be so empowering, but I've never felt more capable than when I cannot even carry all the harvest in one trip. When I have to make three trips to bring in the harvest because it's all just so heavy. I have so much gratitude for this. So I started watching YouTube, following others on social media, and learning about what people were doing in this whole homesteading movement. Things that they were doing to be more self-sufficient and sustainable. But I also saw a disconnect. I noticed a lot of animals being raised for food. And some people in the homesteading lifestyle were barely gardening at all. A lot of the people I saw online were spending a lot more time raising meat chickens or focusing on dairy animals. And I realized that this life that we were so excited to live wasn't being represented online or on social media. In all my searches of other homesteads or people living similar lifestyles, I rarely found anyone applying a plant-based approach. And in reality, the term homesteading was often synonymous with livestock. I saw animals being viewed as commodities, their value related to the purpose that they served on a farm. So we decided to embrace plant-based homesteading as a way to represent our focus on producing our own food in the garden, growing and consuming plants, and finding so much joy in doing that. You should the best part is we feel really good about our compassionate choices and living more connected to our food, how it's produced, and how it makes a positive impact on the land. We're building our homestead day by day to give us more time to enjoy this lifestyle and more delicious food to put on our plates. This past year we started an orchard and we'll be turning it into a half acre food forest over time. We expanded our garden from the 30 by 50 plot to over 6,000 square feet of no-till using permaculture methods like Google culture, roost out and back to Eden.
we found a way to house roosters together happily and they'll be working on prepping the garden over the winter. We even learned how to make maple syrup, our own sustainable, natural, and healthy sweetener, right in our backyard. And we're remodeling our barn to improve the structures on our farm and create beautiful spaces. We want to show people that this is a life worthy of living, a compassionate, abundant, and full life and we really wouldn't have it any other way.